all of you are looking for is the demonstration that uh, where is the Islamic bank, where is the Islamic government, where is the politics, where is the market. Thank you very much for I'm inviting me. I am saying that no. Islam uh, offers us knowledge. That is the first pillar. So I have created a course which is called Introduction to Statistics and Islamic Approach. Now, this is shocking. Shocking even to me because I was taught that statistics is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What does Islam have to say about 2 uh, plus 2 so, equals 4? Um, Obviously nothing. So, uh, how can statistics uh, have an Islamic approach? If like we have to a convey today is uh, law of gravity, it is the same in Iran, it is the same in England. It is being said. It doesn't have, uh, doesn't, there is no Islamic law of gravity. So, it seems very strange. We are trapped in ways of but thinking which are actually what I am saying us. is that the and Western structure teaching them of and knowledge studying them without is fundamentally and deeply flawed. And if we and, uh, apply Islamic principles, so, uh, we can improve how we teach uh, mathematics. Uh, let me say we can that improve and are not just minor improvements. We can massively of Islam change. 14 centuries In this ago, course, when mankind was in darkness, it's not just ke and I say a hadith first and then I teach the same material which is in the sense uh, taught in the, these, the West. People the who are very backwards and ignorant, the, and the contents and, and everything changes. Them Although it is not true that, and I've discarded and everything. everything. The unique said, I have no allergy or hostility to the, the West. The world for one so thousand they are years. saying is right. No parallel we accept it. We don't. What, it's, uh, the only now thing the we reject is, is what is wrong. <coughs> the problem is not those that teachings, uh, as people uh, who are relevant and valuable today, it seems accusing me of that I reject everything which is from the West today. But West is of bad value. I reject not those Western, get out uh, of the, the problem is that Muslims are so impressed well, the with the West that, that they accept everything from the West regardless of whether it is right or wrong. The professor so I say let's be discriminated, Islam let's take what is good become and reject what is bad. So the truth so, is that <coughs> today Islam is a stranger to so the Muslims. I am going to describe a general approach to knowledge and I am going so to explain how this revolutionary uh, idea changes Islam, which today the Muslims And I have a know. course, this course is complete by the way. I have Islam this course is a new uh, way of online thinking about available the world, video lectures, the society, the human being. I have uh, the Prophet labs, I have a quizzes, model of excellence in conduct, uh, which are all in that in the Muslims. A complete online course, he was a mercy which I am uh, trying to mankind. Today, get adopted. It's far better than Islam, anything currently available. Of course, in West, including exaggeration and uh, uh, the online and distortion of the enemy. But there is enough basis there. The Muslims are thinking about how to kill the kafirs, not how to convert the kafirs and to think about them as our brothers and our. So, Islam gave the idea that the strong are responsible. To protect the weak, not to exploit the weak. The rich are responsible to give their excess wealth to the poor, not to extract more money from the poor. And there is this uh, collective social responsibility. Well, every child in the ummah is my child. And if somebody in the whole ummah is hungry, then I am responsible. This is a unique concept of Islam. It doesn't exist anywhere. And in practical, real world, the culture and civilization of Islam had many properties which nobody All right, so has ever equaled. Inter inter uh, the Islamic today, approach to knowledge today is very different from the Western approach to knowledge. Because society is claimed even to the meaning the of what knowledge is, is different between Islam achieved and West. Discrimination. They have all sorts of social problems and which which we have overcome they had so so why na kami matai karwa jata raha revolution karwa ke dil se ehsaas se jaya jata raha not only that we have the second crisis of knowledge the treasure and the most important treasure is the treasure um, of knowledge because of that has three centuries but we have even Islam forgotten been, what it was uh, islamic that we civilizations lost. have been under attack and, and colonized so, and defeated in many islam fronts, is a stranger we don't so have it. Muslims as, as have people come have to been think where is Islam? That yeah. our message so we don't have it. Is not any, any show as up, any, any valuable today as it was for our teens family teens. lives. And our, today, um, so average communities, our neighborhood, the Western are not like Islamic neighborhoods, and our uh, only our political system, and our justice and if system. If you look at the educational system, actions of the Muslims, Islam. so so all, all of our children are Islam. studying we science and chemistry and mathematics and physics, and very few are. So the first thing Quran is that so in, in Islamic practice, we are uh, saying that educational the message of the system, Quran 
today uh, as i have not uh, very used to title my course introduction to, to statistics yeah. for muslims the message of but europe i change it to introduction to need. statistics for an islamic approach because so this is a you can expect non muslim a situation of shock and awe but uh, and uh, uh, basically inferiority complex i am going to be generated by defeat islamic which has led to our acceptance uh, framework of ideas for thinking about actually knowledge. contradictory to and, islam and uh, why to islam why yeah. why islamic why not uh, yeah, knowledge is universal is, uh, so many if times i'm going to teach the west, physics i can uh, say is something like, which is exactly uh, they the opposite of what islam is saying so the thing is that islam has a unique wrong, approach to knowledge no longer have the confidence that sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a teacher then the quran and must mean Allah something else Allah in his so first interpret the quran instead of rejecting what the europeans are saying alaq iqra wa rabbuka al akram allazi 'allama bil qalam i would like to say that there are Allah fundamental laws describing himself in as the teacher the european knowledge structure of knowledge qalam so for example so knowledge is what they define to be islam. knowledge so what we say is about knowledge is islam calls is knowledge in very strong conflict with the ideas so, about knowledge that west has all the west doesn't among the questions by that are central in islam epistemology. what is the purpose is of life to the foundations of the way that they teach if we don't so, have an answer to no this question then this is the first question which we must ask explicit decision is there right, but you are not according answer, to this philosophy we don't have to agree on that and, uh, the philosophy I mean, itself is not from a european of your course say okay uh, it is ends it is not generally then uh, define a purpose of living <laughs> what 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 do so, you want to do Before one of the ways that, that we we cannot uh, answer any other question are different is that cuz how are we going to construct economics quran. how are we going to yeah. behave towards each other when everything depends on the quran then what is the purpose there is agreement life. that this is true but now you will in islamic all economics they but try physics to, chemistry uh, biology uh, mathematics for example they will not find any answer to this question it says that so in a cut without uh, answering this question zakat. so yeah. now they are saying that physics is not agree that zakat is not knowledge first, but if you are but addressing a western life? audience this is not knowledge this is not a valid Why argument it's so not what science. they said okay we have wealth tax and it, it has is, this justification uh, so basically there is an issue that so we, when you talk uh, to non muslims or you address uh, non muslims useful knowledge is that it enters the heart approach another question is among muslims what type of western knowledge enters your heart and there are certain practices now in a in a gave us the knowledge contemporary changes the hearts secular of people journal you cannot say so that this has has to do with ethics and morality so accept it our personal right. so you can't even mention such a thing because yeah, part of how the time the excellences of discourse in conduct is the model for us universally accepted in the west from the individual so conduct you cannot have conduct, an islamic discourse towards each other will, so so by subordinating our, ourselves uh, to rules families we look like by trying to write an article like, which can be are the basic in general social automatically force ourselves <laughs> no mention of this think outside of the islamic paradigm economics is individual so that's why individualistic we need every person our own system of education our own approach to courses so the economic theory comes out of uh, a the other thing is about the world we have all come the, uh, to it is not explicitly said i was also but it is actually by this thinking that i was also trained in the west every then there human are domains of knowledge is an individual which have no only thing human uh, beings which want have no relation to maximizes consumption so this, this idea world. when it first so came in the west um, Okay, was violently rejected. Believes in that religion uh, that is all encompassing. All infinite. domains of knowledge. And he wants to eat as much as he can. Of religious but um, but for eventually, some, for the Muslim secular mindset won out. And so now the idea has become so strong. But we are so teaching this to our students. That we Muslims also believe. Without that understanding that this is in conflict part of secular knowledge, knowledge of has Islam. nothing to do with. Not only is it that uh, Islam. Every individual. So the fact is that there is nothing. There is no knowledge. but also that this is a good goal for him and this is so what this will maximize his welfare uh, is and common if, if everybody has a lot to eat this will maximize the so- social welfare this is all wrong ideas so in islam <clears throat> so uh, we have a goal of life and we have said wrote a book called orientalism which is very life. important uh, knowledge is useful if it helps the main argument was this, <coughs> this that the europeans and if it is the rest of the world from this purpose or or for reasons in that, the wrong direction uh we will then, discuss then uh, it is not briefly. useful later so islam has a distinction But all of their knowledge between, um all of the things that they say and useless knowledge are west explicitly contaminated by this, this conquest distinction 
They so say that there is no such thing you see, as useless you knowledge. Economic theory or political Why? theory. Because they or deny the existence of purpose. Theory. All of this and that also is explicit. Can be that seen no, as a life is meaningless. Effort to justify uh, universe was created by an accident. What they actually it will did, which perish was in an accident, no matter wrong. what they we provide, do, so no matter how much heroism we have, no matter as, how as much courage, courage do that my utility it makes no difference. No one is watching. No one cares. The and I don't care cold and anything about you. And uh, then silent. this provides a justification uh, it is, that it okay, doesn't care whether if you I can conquer your country and exploit it, then this is all knowledge is equivalent. Because if you have no purpose, then um every yes yes so comes for example uh, you're but, curious, at, uh, curious about the wings of a butterfly the, you can count that there so are so of, many very often the, the theory of a provides a cover this is knowledge for the reality <coughs> and they explicitly so say that for example the usa invasion of iraq uh, they discovered uh, ultrasound they, so you, uh, you can publicize it by saying that, that people be curious and uh, there is a dangerous dictator he has weapons of mass destruction in and we are going to bring useful and what is democracy to the people this is wrong so this is what the cover was and this is what was believed by so the first thing people. is that all our actions and, uh, have to be ibadah worship actually of course so it was how driven by oil study, what should we, we study are destroying countries so like that Afghanistan our teaching and Libya, is an act of all worship over the world and our studying is also an act for, of worship uh, uh, this is only possible for a muslim Nothing audience uh, so that's why violation of prophets my courses are targeted towards can muslim be audiences for that <coughs> so that is the the first thing in order to convert this of politics study to taught in the west uh, worship is to focus on our intentions why are we seeking so, this knowledge <clears throat> everything well, uh, that we study the quran strongly encourages contaminated by seeking this of knowledge desire the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was behavior. sent as a teacher <clears throat> so for example there are many books so the most important of knowledge the, the is that which teaches us why are we how to not be develop human this is because we don't have enough and capital and that is what uh, yes. the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what taught, happened to how this we can learn to be human beings but uh, uh, there is a eurocentric uh, history there are um, that we have been principles which are captured and this is and at the background in the Quran one of the, the problem is is that many of the ideas that they have, they are I mean hidden in the subtext there subjects. are purposes not for which we are but they are clear we have to fulfill these purposes behind the to text that these is purposes we may need to have knowledge so, which may be of the dominant story which is told use it may be restricted in time and space it may have context for example the, uh, the is, uh, order which is which that we, we have all, the all come to believe that from is the story attack. of the white man's bird so now in a certain time this may the europeans be became learning how very to knowledgeable build, uh, and very advanced and very civilized cities. and then they and around and they saw that the rest of the world was completely different undeveloped and so primitive. fulfilling the order to rap feed the poor may involve and learning hydroponics so today they said oh which well now it is our responsibility and different kind of all of these so other people all knowledge is about uh, civilization and all of the benefits <clears throat> and share our but not in isolation only in connection but to in fact, a goal <clears throat> of course so it is that the reality is that they not went, by itself the not to but i am going to use mathematics to, to solve the which problem they, they built the railroads so but they didn't say the railroad of for statistics. our benefit they built the railroads that explicitly in order to so say they said we have a very um, small amount of army and we expect that as we are exploiting these what, people they will uh, rebel against instead of that, saying okay so we uh, need to be able to transport our four, army from Or uh, here is the people. median of a list. This was not built for the benefit. I have to find out. It was built for the subjugation of India. What are the real so the world problems that are solved by using medians? Civilizing the world. Now it in the West, with looting the world. Split up. So there is a, the a very, theory uh, and the practice. Important history book. But it is out called the fragmentation of knowledge, which, which is, are contrary to the dominant belief. Something they which don't, many people have complained about. They don't make it. Brown president said that this is a serious problem for us. well known i myself they are not uh, publicized was trained in uh, did my phd in economics not accepted and written in general stanford and i went to my graduate advisor so that what should i says, do uh, i want, want to do economics so he risk. said well there are two branches and it, in it he said the econometrics which is done by see, this guy if you look through department. the libraries or amazonian econometrics the theory so i said what's the difference on the topic why are only more countries poor and why are rich countries do real world data and then apply the divide how come east real data so following a low trajectory of economics is very prestigious so that is what i learned i learned rise of europe assumptions and same calculations and formulas europe is so never looked at any real world data 
And what are the standard so when I wrote you my find, book, uh, <coughs> you will find that one of the comments was in this guy oh, knows these theory a lot, lazy, but he has no idea about the real world. So I was science, felt they have technology, uh, angry and incited, they are civilized, we had they, been trained are, they have to rationality. That once you have the theory, we are just irrational, we are superstitious, uh, feeding in the data and running the regression. Nonsense like this. But when I um, uh, started to do it, it took me 10 years. So what Stravagana says, chapter, I wanted to put in a genuine a situation, real world problem, something which has happened lots of times. I found history. that there weren't any. You have a civilization, because the, the theories that we made, it becomes advanced, were developed, it becomes wrapped in luxury, elegant mathematically, but not to be applicable. And there are barbarians the who are that outside. They are young, work energetic. But ones which had nice solutions. And, and they come in and they not destroy the civilization. Not the real world dirty problems which so don't have uh, solutions which are easy to... So on. See, so and we were told only to do the theory. There were many civilizations. So we, we worked on, on nice mathematical we problems. So we China didn't do any. Four thousand so years. After that, I realized that the real world doesn't correspond to the theories that we learned. Africans were very civilized. So had their that own means that it is not useful knowledge. And Europe, and the same they were barbarians, they were fighting now, each other continuously and, and the way we throughout teach. centuries. Now, instead, so, so this is because of this continuous has, warfare, has taken me 10 and years because to of develop peace, this course. They became, uh, because they, because there was something which was called a military teacher, revolution. I am responsible for the time of my they students. They became very advanced. I am teaching them useless and knowledge. And they also had that I will be questioned about this. philosophy. That, that I wasted the time of my students. Uh, the, so I want the law to make sure that anything I, I teach if I am strong is enough useful. to conquer, then so I want to find uh, this that real the right problem to where this concept Nobody else. helps. I mean, the civilization now this is not this available in the Western past. So I am strong and enough they to have these, uh, punch you and take your wallet, then it is my right to do so. real world. They take a data set from the real world. They had this. But and they, they still really have this. Say, here Same, is a real this world is the problem. Let's political start with the philosophy problem. that like, is currently to, uh, in operation. If I have the strength to I conquer want to my ask, neighbor, will then increasing there is no, the salaries no one of can teachers stop me, and it is my right improve to so. the educational outcomes of students? So that what they did was they problem. went and they found now, that they were a military more advanced than that, all the rest of the world. As you, if for various reasons, which are complex, because there are many confounding variables. So they went and conquered eighty-five percent. The twenty-five. you find it for one century there was peace while Europe was out conquering. The, the rest problem. of the world. There are many they other factors have that you have to take into consideration. After they conquered so 85% then, of the uh, planet, then again, World War One, World War Two. This uh, was just chapter European text, wars between European I powers. I show that this technique is they had useful in solving this real world. world problem, but I had so to develop it, was, it on my own a world because war. the Western structure so of knowledge doesn't care since about useful and useless. After a few years of peace. The U.S. has so been invading the Quran right and, and the and Hadith uh, are full of have, encouragement. We are living in a continuous learn, state of but warfare. But also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua that so, Allah give me useful knowledge and protect me from harmful knowledge. What Stavriyano says is so, that uh, we wealth cannot, and poverty uh, we are just the opposite non discriminating the same that Everything that comes from the West, we just teach it. Income distribution are the leaders of the world, whatever they say must be right. European countries no, and some of their descendants have to screen and filter. Extremely rich. Okay, this is coming some from the West. I don't extremely it automatically so because it's basic question from the West. Why are I must some countries assess this. Why are some this countries. is a principle, this principle like the Pareto you know, optimality. Not a what does it mean in real world? They came and they I say it's clear that the world and they took many millions and millions of pounds, all surplus production from India. Basically, what the Pareto optimality means is that property is sacred. If I take question, profit. Show you a knife and I take your money away, then I ask why is huge amount why I'm rich. And it Other is not a very hungry, complicated then, question uh, to answer. Pareto optimality says you I have the money. Uh, wealth away from the rich so, man, but give uh, uh, but food uh, to the all poor. of these books. Have, is he Islam lazy? Islam is he says incompetent. Maybe he doesn't have brains. The basic this, this, needs not the questions. take priority over property rights. So if there are people hungry, then you should uh, you can forcibly so, take money from the. Now, Which modern man. economic theory feed. pretends so to be a of science. Instead of we can think of another type of principle. We can say that, okay, this a redistribution of income is, is just good a weapon. If everybody it's a tool is, which is life used expectancy to exploit improves the people. And nobody's is a, life is expectancy is a very this is an powerful weapon. Which is just as logical, just as rational. It pretends to be, rational. Rational. Pretends to be knowledge. And if we applied this principle just today, propaganda. we would find that the situation Nothing is more than that. very, very far from uh, You are very familiar optimal. with the... People are having... But, but the principle Perkins, of capitalism, the confessions their of an philosopher Gautier has said... So basically that, what he says is that he uh, goes to countries property and... Right. So, so it is a normative principle, the Pareto. Economic it's models. A, it's not a positive principle. Which shows that if you take a loan from us, problem you will with Western knowledge immediately that skyrocket claims that they make are of different course, from the reality. What happens is that... It tends to be objective, as, uh, but it is actually normative. <clears throat> Nigeria... So, 
Gauthier uh, says Obasanjo that the said morality that we took a loan for 14 million and if uh, the rich later, man, uh, uh, if he wants we, to we throw paid, crumbs uh, from 20, his table uh, of that to, the, and to his dog, more is remaining. that gives him greater Another pleasure double is remaining. than feeding the starving woman who is begging for his help. So then this he compound has, uh, interest every right is used to, so. to trap so this and enslave poor nations. That, uh, it goes with the but colonization of the world. But this is not by itself enough. That you can kill and destroy a whole country. If it brings you profits, there is no moral uh, obligation on you to do anything and else. This is uh, also so this distributed is to some key people who are interested in buried within the framework of the apparently neutral so looking, not objective looking economic This is a new thing. This has started started from the beginning. The the same when UK exact acquired a 50-year lead over again, Europe. This looks like an industrial and we're just manipulating Again, there numbers. is a complex history. But I um, have shown that um, in this course that the industrial revolution of, created the possibility of massive uh, overproduction. And when this we apply statistics, drivers of history, when you are taught to produce huge okay, amounts of mean, median, goods, mode. These are three who will buy measures goods? of Central tendencies. So they wanted to create so markets for now. Goods. Which one so is good? They created the theory cannot, of free trade. Uh, which one should you use? You cannot answer this the question until you have a real world situation. It is good for and both countries. Have a policy and in front of you, and so they use this the the idea of and, uh, separation because they were ahead in our the PhD the program in their in power. statistics. That so uh, the statistical uh, uh, the statistician the looks only at the believed. numbers. And there is a, so the a real world uh, field American specialist. Indian he looks at the, world. the imports. And together they, they will uh, do the work. The, the real good. world, uh, the field specialist will give you the data. You do the As analysis. A result, and you tell European him the result. economies this went into depression. This is a wrong model because we have to ask uh, the field What are you trying to Germany. do? I, uh, he might economist. say that, well, I am trying to help that the, time. He is now develop a tax policy. Ideas are no longer then you have to understand what, whether this tax policy modern is going to be just or that unjust. He because when the he uh, created the infant industry the argument, real world he said that, yes, free now, trade is good if the two countries are equal. Uh, but Western the epistemology is behind and back then that it needs to protect the numbers industry. tell you everything its industries will never once grow once you have these numbers your analysis and so does not depend when less argument was believed and the european put up protective barriers their economy is bigger than nine they managed my lecture is is uh, five bigger so, than six <clears throat> Or is six bigger? Uh, than this five. free that trade was actually objective. a weapon. The they only one answer. Were well, made no. war with China. Depends. Opium Where war. Did these numbers and come at from? the end you of the war, the tree, what did the treaty so, say? For example, I said, allow free uh, this uh, trade with five, England. These, these they made were, war these with Japan. That were produced by uh, Admiral Perry two and children counting. some other one of them people is three year old and invaded Japan. The other one is nine year old. And they said that the only result of this that okay, the nine year old said five and really allow trade of six. So maybe now, five is bigger. Is that free trade is good. So the more people were. So the real world country. This is just uh, a very simple example. But they are more complicated. They were uh, uh, doing a favor to Japan of by ranking of university. Uh, uh, free you can show that. So yani it why is did they have to make more subjective? I mean, and by say, uh, changing uh, our, I am giving you uh, a gift. Our goals, we uh, can change the ranking. And I very show much. him a gun that you have and to accept this gift. Why? I mean, if it is a gift, it's right for him. Very few people just take it. Understand. Is that so there is no our theories say that no free trade is a great thing. Yani we should one of the it. part of the religion of the war is that with countries in order to force scientific them to has to be measurable. So there is something so there has to be a range about there has to be a ranking. Thing. But actually, this is false. There is no objective. Every ranking is subjective. There is no po no possibility of creating an objective ranking. So because basically it's a mathematical uh, Marx, you have a multi-dimensional. Uh, Capitalism works if you take not a, just because a number the capitalists in, uh, have power, but because ten also space, and you say I want one number to represent this. There is no the system function, is efficient, no natural, just uh, a nice function which will map ten dimensions space into a line works without distortion. Not just and so because there does not the exist power uh, and they have wealth, a unique objective and we are way to measure and we have quality less of power. university. If but you also have ten because different criteria. we believe that this is the best system, and we mapping you find theories which explain to us place some weight. How on we some should work. factors, so, which so will that be we accept our and, chains, uh, it will and we make explicitly assign weights, but you can hide the, to us. You can hide the subjectivity, this is the soft power. and you can look, make it look like it is an object. Uh, you can, you Foucault, can never eliminate subjectivity. Uh, French philosopher said, "So is that you see, <clears throat> power is constituted by knowledge. It is not just any. We think that power so, is guns, uh, and we need to look and at rockets and uh, bombs. The purpose actually, for which the students are learning." Now, is, in the uh, West, 
much uh, the students uh, are taught that the power. purpose of learning is to earn the money knowledge that we are given in islam the purpose the is to knowledge seek inner transformation facts that we become a human being to these are actually uh, much stronger external elements of the power so that this the west requires an entirely different way of thinking i tell my students that look you are here so we have been fed these I false theories and we have been made to believe this you will i want you even to though islam provides to make provided the, us with protection uh, but we had uh, set to improve aside. the welfare of the umma because we said the west is saying to, it, it cannot be wrong this thing just so that you so for example the pareto optimality uh, everybody uh, because laysa lil insani illa ma sa if you make the niyat that uh, first this knowledge will have me earn a living how it came into be well, there was this italian, italian nobleman per qanaat kar gaya fredo pareto varna gulshan mein ilaaj hai and uh, at that time you make a big yeah, near nobleman and i will use my land to help the umma then allah taala and reforms were being proposed that there are these poor peasants they are living and they have these small patches of land which they have been farming so for a long time so let us we have to then we have to be efficient we can't just yeah, teach any old garbage that this uh, patch of land so the they books. can produce have food for themselves find out which pieces so of knowledge are useful in the changing the world so then you have to study how does the world change if what, they are what kinds of statistical uh, analysis have been then, used uh, if they are that if that can, have if been you give them the food then you can make them do whatever they and also we have to study the perceptions there is they are independent than they will one book but many prefer to how to lie with dependent instead of slaves the confessions of an economic Uh, so now, how, how to argue against the use of very reasonable people. so he we came up with this argument which how can we and where are the econometrics which which actually help people interpersonal so comparison of parts of the is important your standard text that, but so you, you can study and find out he's sipping his wine teach the students the third glass so we have to be engaged and the pleasure he is getting is again this is another now look at the scores present dividing line between western knowledge and he is eating a, a, and, a uh, piece of bread a uh, chunk of dry bread that what pleasure uh, he is yeah, getting islam, from this. he doesn't even teach us that we have to be taste. neutral and detached so if we say that okay but islam says that you glass of wine away from the noble man and try give to change it one more bread you're to the allowed to be detached have we made this with your hand you must speak against it and who knows your heart should can't say feel this is what for the pareto says injustice So, so you are not allowed uh, to be neutral and theory, detached. Uh, so the Western economic theory says, "Look, here is today, a person. If eight people who are own hungry, let us list more his symptoms. Why he is bottom three point five percent? Which the, is oh, I see that he is malnourished, and, and you write down and you uh, you eight create a theory which own half the plant is well. If you want to describe the well, but that's not wrong with it. How do you go and feed him? Uh, Don't worry about it. The theory says that observation. What you so earn is your marginal product. Have, so these people uh, are the most productive people on the planet. Five star hotels. And they are rich because uh, like they, they are contributing the most. So they should get the most elimination. So today the theory says that you should lower the taxes because you want to increase. So wealth. we are engaged with the struggle. Now another uh, fraud that economic theory plays and all in all of these things embedded in our minds is that says, we have a GNP per capita. So. Uh, uh, we are distinguished people, from the west we don't look at who has the wealth what does gnp so then there is this do it says famous, that take uh, all the wealth of the nation and distribute fact it equally value distinction. among all the people then tell me what that number is which uh, we are talking in economics let's look at the wealth of the bottom 90% for example norms, that would have and basically uh, science is only with facts. picture of the economy and uh, economics that you study if we were instead of focusing on because we have uh, been, so uh, their own philosophers see we are focusing on have realized that the this distinction is not valid uh, every economic sense, student is writing that this is something how growth is affected by x y and things that are purely values um, but even though growth is not the uh, large majority of the things that we never taught us the facts and values are what if entangled with okay, each other mixed up you cannot separate the rich people are even you see i'm going to look at when we want to describe the bottom 20% of it there are the growth of hundred million that facts is my fact, goal every human being actually the islamic teaching says so, that okay now how are we going to sum, summarize all these people fact, getting people, what they need one this is what any our summary that we choose will reflect your values this is, this is what is are, are there people fact. hungry for example i say okay, any hungry I'm person this is how to calculate the now economics never mentions hunger index finger of all of this population so i have if you give a rolls royce million the millionaire people will say that this is not in a part of red to the poor we don't think giving a rolls royce to the millionaire is much is so worth much more we were going to calculate gnp thousands thousand and thousands of red 2000 that because people. that's important because this is uh, how much larger are hungry gnp value transaction because the bread is cheap uh, this is not an uh, important fact according so to economic theory 
uh, you so will get even, more. Uh, yani what is being measured you will by get the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics? Yani is the GNP a normative. will increase more if you stop principle. manufacturing it's based bread. Based on certain normative and ideas about money what is important and what is about an economy and what is not. Now Islam teaches so all us very these different false things. False ideas. If we would like theory, to look at the health status, the educational, educational status, propagating, and, and the nutritional status. But those data are not available so one because of the according to economic theory, principles of economic theory, which the wealth, is fundamentally opposed to Islamic down to all the people. So you don't need to worry about uh, the poor. You will find Furthermore, this. the goal of the economic theory is to economics fulfill all wants, by natural laws. regardless of so if where they poor, originate. There is a law which makes sure that he's good. He's, he has low margin so Somebody says that I want to do about it. We're not going to say, so, you know, don't really Economic theory this. gives us entirely different ideas. About uh, no, we don't what say is that. useful no. knowledge. If he wants it, then and what is uh, our job knowledge. is to satisfy that want, and that is what creates scarcity. So there are and so basic Islamic rules for, for every human being is to maximize his lifetime utility of from consumption. The Western rules, we don't ask that in the uh, Western rule. Maybe you should actually from changing. The, you, maybe the West, you should lower your standard uh, of living. It is becoming more because the so market this is society exactly seeks to expand. This is another one of the of themes of Have you seen Pulani? the one who has taken his own desire as his goal? Initially, God has fear of knowingly caused him to go astray. Outside of the years. market. But today, and heart now and the his universities are being so run in turn into corporations. In the USA about and the UK, homo economic and the and teachers there, I met the one who are complaining very desire. much about this. Desire now we are just treated as an input. If you want so something... Now, the student comes uh, in and says that theory to his teacher that, that I've paid you so much if, and now if you I are want something, uh, responsible to deliver this education. He's buying will maximize my wealth. This is now, Islam a very no. different conception if from people that. You pursue Islamic your conception. desires, this will so not the lead teachers to are uh, rules are that students are precious. They are mines of gold and silver. So because of this false goal that within every student has taken, we have to fulfill. Yani uh, students as to a, learn as a nation, we have to, to value the time okay, of students. I can't come half an hour. Theory. Economic policy for because Pakistan. My students, so each of them then are economic economic theory says that the has problem, the potential uh, to turn uh, into problem a is scarcity. Al Biruni, I, I want to feed uh, my many uh, people yani. who are hungry. So I, want to I have sure to that ensure that I provide the channel to that student. Economic theory says that the problem is scarcity. There's not enough goods, which is possible. Every student has the potential. If we increase production, I have then we will be able to feed our children. Is this true? Completely false. And similarly, there are there students, enough food today for students to feed our children, which are given in so detail the in Islamic is not books. not one of but basically uh, it has to be growth. That you seek knowledge with uh, humility, the, you the value wealth it. Wealth is already there. You do not seek a very important one difference. Redistribution. You do not seek it for status to give uh, to for those who are pride. Poor. And Islam is all about generosity. Which is, these are the standard uh, reasons by which we start. We and so seek much knowledge to make money. So much more. We seek knowledge because it is a treasure, uh, a gift of Allah. You see, economic theory is uh, is a cover for the structures of power. Now, today, the wealthy have so, more than enough knowledge is money a, a great gift and to Prophet feed the entire planet salam, easily uh, with a small part of what they have. We should, if this we are the zakat, show I mean, if the attitude to Allah for knowledge that we have, and Allah Ta'ala will increase us in knowledge. Uh, money to the poor. Oh, everybody on this we planet have, to have be appreciation able to and respect uh, for our fellow learners. Food, this is explicitly education that make room all of their circles. needs can easily be if taken. Somebody care wants of to come more. Knowledge, we say no. They, can, they don't have enough money. You don't belong but in our social status. What the Pareto oh, principle not, uh, says: acceptable. We should and try anybody who is seeking knowledge. We have to find uh, a way. The economic theory says allow him that you cannot learn. take from the rich. And speaking, scarcity is the problem. Trying to make sure that anybody who gets admission. No, it's not uh, because has, the, uh, we who, uh, we the wealthy we have, have access uh, sources of scholarship and, and they are not giving to the poor. Money will the not poor be are not eating because there is not they enough are, around, uh, which is completely fight. false. There is enough around already. And it, uh, there has been for a long time. And knowledge is... There has been... We have uh, had the resources to the responsibility to the convey to others. So this is entirely different from... Forever. Reverse that. One so the problem uh, and growth has, has been occurring at a rapid rate for one century, uh, and still uh, acquire we have knowledge. billions of people who are living under a dollar a day. We must so uh, act on the knowledge which we have obtained. The economic theory tells us to so follow it has to be practical and useful. And, uh, Again, this is a very basically diverting attention from the real source of the problem. Any, uh, the real the source of, of the problem is that the rich, rich are not this again requires giving to the poor. A lot of the change Quran says that in the how you teach. wealth of the rich, there uh, is a right in economics that the poor has. This about is poverty, the then I crucial. Give exercise and essence of the problem. We say that poverty is 
bad and it should be eliminated so, <clears throat> that's islamic teaching economic so theory says that there's no it. difference you're, between you not do you know anybody who's modern modern so if you know somebody about do something idea islam arose in the middle of take small steps that are in your lionel robbins instead of saying okay, introduce okay, the government should uh, build that, a school for the poor there was this you are educated idea if you are um, servant the western uh, economist child is uneducated you teach him from wants you do what you can to fulfill needs but that's practical look at your economic theory book There is no mention of needs and wants. There is eagerness and enthusiasm. That's this because of a complicated be story. It has to do this with. This will be done only uh, if it engages the heart of the students. Understanding of science. The Prophet Salah has said that useful knowledge is that which enters the heart. So if we tell the students that they so have great responsibility, a positive that they are going to be the intelligentsia <coughs> of the nation, regardless so of what they learn, whether they learn badly or and that religion is false. These are the top one percent. There is nobody else. They are going to lead the nation. So they better learn something that is observable. That will create exists. A sense of responsibility. Things which are unobservable don't matter yeah, for enthusiasm. Science. So God is unobservable; doesn't exist. Science is observable; it so, exists. So, in the summary, um, that there are two kinds yeah, of knowledge: uh, that worldly is what and religious. In economic theory, to the revealed preference uh, theory, is the secular preference is belief, a feeling in my heart. Teaching worldly like, knowledge, religion has uh, nothing to do with it. I don't like. Uh, so, Islamic uh, belief, for is example, all is knowledge belongs to God. Allah Taala. Right. Uh, uh, so this is unobservable. He knows everything, so, and he gives uh, of that knowledge. Said, replace this by what you can see that he wishes. So if I give somebody two uh, of these the secular beliefs, then he chooses one of them. Prophet, that uh, I can observe. Islamic belief so is that, says that that's revealed by knowledge because because you can see Allah. the choice. So now there are three so, different things. I will uh, stop There's here. There's my choice. I may choose one. And um, what I want to say is that. Even though I like, I have created many maybe I courses. Maybe I think that multinationals are and making excess profits. And I have taped these lectures and I have put them, them online. Or maybe I am on a diet and I I like it, but uh, it's bad for my health. So choice and preference are not the same. But then there is second thing that is the preference same as my welfare. So if I want something, is that the thing that is going to be make me best off? This is what consumer sovereignty says that I know what is best for me, but the Quran so, says um, that uh, interest tax is may be that you like course, something and, and it is not good for you. And it may be that you dislike approach. something and it is good for and, you. So Quran uh, the Quran explicitly denies online. the. I have in this lecture uh, uh, principle of economics which is used, uh, what and which we teach and we say, study, and I provide a critique from. And uh, Western Quran many times ideas says that. And I provide an alternative from. Do not follow your hawa, your desires, because. that will go, uh, go thing, cause you to go astray or that it even it will go, it'll take you to jahannam so the quran teaches that yes we can fulfill our needs but we should not follow our idol desires but economics teaches that no you should fulfill that there's no difference between needs and desires and you should fulfill everything and that is what causes the scarcity because if we say that the uh, needs of the wealthy for their uh, vacation home is the same as the need of the hungry child for milk uh then um, and then that's one principle the second is that the need that uh, market will uh, fulfill is the one which is backed by money so if the wealthy has man has money to purchase his home then the market will produce his vacation home or his uh, rolls royce or whatever and if the poor child does not have the money to buy his milk then the market will not produce it so we say that the markets are efficient they they guide us towards the production of the goods which are the best for the welfare of the society this is what economic theory teaches and it's completely wrong because the poor people demand cannot be expressed by money and and this is fo- fo- being followed today the there are many drugs which have been invented which can cure diseases these are called orphan drugs which can cure diseases uh for many people in africa but these people are poor they don't have enough money to uh, pay for those drugs so no they drugs are not manufactured instead what is happening today is that the pharmaceutical industry is creating designer drugs which are targeted to the wealthy because extreme concentration of wealth has taken place so there are these billionaires so say these billionaires we can design one drug for one person based on his genes and he will pay us more than uh, if we cure 1 million poor people so this is what the market uh, is producing and according to the theory that you and i teach and learn this is the optimal outcome because this is driven by the market if uh, <clears throat> 
So Islamic economics sets a different problem in front of us. It does not say that we have to fulfill all the wants and the desire. It says that wants should be suppressed. And it says that as a society, what is our problem? Our problem is to make sure that there is no hungry people in this society. So we have to take care of, make sure that there is no one hungry. We have to make sure, and then there is, um, fulfill all the basic needs. As Hazrat Umar said, that if one person is hungry, I will be asked about it. So in our whole society, there is this concept of farz kafaya It's not that, unfortunately, the West says that the government is responsible for the people. I am only responsible for my own self. But Islam says, no, it is farz kafaya If there is a hungry child in Islamabad or in Peshawar or anywhere in the Ummah, it is ultimately my responsibility. So, of course, we cannot take care of such a big responsibility. So, there is a system Islam has. It says, okay, you take care of your immediate. You make sure that there is no one hungry in your neighborhood. Make sure that your neighbor is not hungry. And if you can do more, then make sure that within 40 houses there is no hungry. And if, it's, if you can do even more, then you go further. But your responsibility doesn't stop. So, once we start thinking that uh, if we were to build an Islamic economic theory, we would say that how can we arrange the society so that there is no one hungry in all of the Pakistan and actually and in the Ummah. This was done for 1000 years. Muslims created a society in which everyone could get to eat. Everyone had uh, education. There was 100% literacy because all the children, it was the first to make sure that everybody could read the Quran. And this was arranged. We had systems to ensure that. Health. Again, if somebody is sick, we don't say in Islamic civilization, there was no concept that we will give you treatment if you bring out the money. And if a student wanted ilm, then there was no concept that if you don't have enough money, you cannot get education. There is no concept of tuition fees. In fact, Islam has the reverse concept. The one who has knowledge, he has the responsibility to share with those who don't. Abu Huraira said that the question that worries me the most is that Allah Ta'ala will ask that what will you do with this knowledge that I gave you? So I, if I have knowledge, I am responsible to share it with those who don't. It's the reverse and the Ummah is like one body. If one part feels pain, the all parts uh, feel pain. So how would we create an Islamic society? So the first step which the Prophet ﷺ undertook when he came to Medina is that uh, that we have to be like him. He was Rahmatul Lil Alameen. And the Quran says that he feels your sorrow. If you, if you are suffering, then he feels the pain for it. He is kind and merciful. So that, and not just for the believers. The Prophet's heart was filled with sorrow with those who did not believe. And he says, the Quran says, Oh, Prophet, will you kill yourself with sorrow if they don't believe? And he wanted everybody to find his way to Jannah. So even if the person was abusing him and and throwing stones and, and uh, saying bad words about him, the Prophet ﷺ was making dua for him. And uh, he is taught the, that the excellence in conduct is to do good in return for evil. In Battle of Badr, many people were captured who had been very strong enemies of Islam. And uh, Hazrat Umar said that we should kill them all. But Prophet ﷺ said no. And he uh, forgave his bitterest enemies. At the Fath Makkah again, the Mus many Muslims thought that now we have the opportunity for revenge. But uh, Prophet ﷺ said no, we have the opportunity to do, do kindness. And he announced that today no harm will be done to anybody. So the, our deen teaches that you should join ties with those who try to break them. And that if you do uh, good to your enemy, he will become your friend. And uh, there's a hadith that deen 
is all about excellence in conduct. This is the essence of deen. So these are the teachings on which an economic system of an Islamic society is built. These are not the teachings of competition and greed that I take away from you and you take away from me and we compete with each other, we fight. If there's a piece of meat, then I'm pulling on my side and you're pulling on your side. This is not, no, Islam, I am giving it to you and you are pushing it to me. This is, uh, and we, we know this. This is the Islamic society because we have been brought up like this. So, in, uh, in Medina, the Ansar and the Muhajireen and also there were Aas and Khajraj, they had been fighting each other for long times. But Allah Ta'ala united their hearts. And so this is the basic. The Ummah is like one body. The Quran says that you should not make uh, divisions among yourselves and remain united. So how we can create community? Community is the system that by which we take, Islam takes care of the poor. That You see, uh, the basic building block of the community is the family. If you have strong families, then children learn that yes, we cannot be selfish. Uh, the parent tells them that, you know, you have to give this to your brother. You have to play this toy with, with your friends. You can't have it all to yourself. So we teach them how to be generous, how to be cooperative, how to sacrifice. That is the basic building block. And then there is the neighborhood. Islam places so much emphasis on being uh, kind to your neighbor and uh, taking care of his rights and so on. That will build the community. And then there's the masjid. And then there's the workplace that builds relationships. Again, Islamic concept of labor and work is very, very different, radically different from the Western. We'll get to that soon. So, now the thing is that <coughs> today, there is a huge amount of inequality and people are worried about it. And very justly, that is because uh, we are living under the Western domination, which is leads to the law of the jungle. If I have a lot of money and power, then I will use it to exploit the others. I will use it to oppress and exploit and take advantage of others, because that's the that's the law of the jungle. If I have the power to dominate, then I will dominate, and this is my right. But Islam teaches the opposite: that if I am given wealth, it is and it is more than what I need. This is, I have been given it for the poor. And this is a test for me to make sure that I, I convey it. <clears throat> so Allah Ta'ala says that He has created inequality. Some, some people have more. So inequality is, according to Islam, not bad. Why? Because, just think, the rich have responsibility for the poor, strong have a responsibility for the weak. Now, if in this situation, so suppose that my chacha is very wealthy and I am very poor. So, this is inequality. Will it bother me? Of course not. Uh, that means that whenever I have need, I can go and ask, uh, can you give me some money? And I will have no problem and he will give me the money. So, <clears throat> in a community where people are joined together and one part feels the pain, inequality is not a problem. But in a community where everyone is an individual and they are competing with other, inequality is a big problem. So, if you are living in a jungle, then you should be talking about inequality. And But if you are living in civilization, inequality is, doesn't matter. Because the uh, rich are told that you give everything which is above your needs. So, you see... The main economic problem according to current economic theory is growth. How can we get more and more and more and solve the problem of scarcity? But actually, uh, growth is not the problem. Today, we have already enough resources on the planet to feed everybody. So the main problem is distribution, <clears throat> which is never mentioned in your economic text. How can we feed, clothe, house, educate, take care of the health needs? So, economists have tried a solution and they have been trying it for centuries and they have failed. <coughs> this solution of growth doesn't work. 
uh, even in their own societies, they are looking at, uh, and there is a theory of, um, uh, of happiness theory, which uh, Easterlin started. Does money buy happiness? He says, for a hundred uh, of years, we have been having growth. Our standard of living has improved by 30 times. So has this brought us happiness? So by many, many indications that he could find, there has been no change in the happiness. So this is something which Allah Ta'ala has told us that dunya is mataul ghurur. And he says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد. Don't be deceived by the apparent prosperity. Although those people have, yes, they have big cars and big houses, but are they happy? Well, you can go to the defense here and you can see the old man and his wife sitting alone because their ch children have gone to America because they this is how they train them and they are wondering what to do because nobody to take care of them in their old age. So the money does not buy happiness. <clears throat> now, the thing is that yani, this has been statistically proven by those people who have no knowledge of religion that increasing money, why? Because basically people's happiness is relative to the standards to which they are accustomed. So if you keep increasing the standards, then what you need to be happy also keeps increasing. So your base level never changes. So if you are living in a very simple life, you can be very happy. And we can easily see that if you are, <clears throat> as they did studies of millionaires and lottery ticket winners, and they find that these people, the lots of money doesn't make them happy because in order to be a millionaire, you have to neglect your family because you have to spend day and night pursuing money. But the source of happiness is not money, it's the family. And so these billionaires, they give uh, yachts and uh, private airplanes to their children, but their children hate them. And in an interview, they say, the old man uh, gave me all of these things, but he never gave me his time. All I wanted was his love and I never got that. <laughs> so you can imagine that if there is an old man, he's sitting in a village and he's hungry and his roof leaks, but everybody in the village loves him, all the children come to play with him. Will he be happy or the man who is sitting in uh, Pearl Continental, but he has two security guards, everybody is trying to kill him and take his money away. Will he be happier? <clears throat> so this growth solution, this scarcity idea, it doesn't work. The, the so-called fundamental principle of economics is wrong. What does Islam say? Well, Islam addresses the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is that Allah Ta'ala is going to try us. He said that, um, that we give some people excess wealth as a trial. This is a trial. People think that, oh, Allah Ta'ala has honored me, but this is not so. And we take some money away from some people. And this is also a trial. So the people who have been trying with poverty, some people are tried with wealth. And if the wealthy do their job, and if the poor do their job, then society will be fine. So we have to encourage the rich to be the generous. We have to tell them that there is a right in your wealth to the poor. We have to tell the poor to be have dignity. And... Um, not uh, show their need to anybody other than Allah and the rich are responsible to detect the problem and to secretly feed them and in a way that is does not uh, cause them harm or does not insult them. Oh, you are poor, here, take this. No, this is not allowed in Islam. It's better than, yani, uh, Allah says that if, you, if you're going to insult the poor person, don't give. It is, uh, yani, his honor is more valuable than uh, the food, but this is not true in the West. So there is collective social responsibility. We have to take care of each other. Everybody is my brother and my brother will uh, want not to be a burden on me. So even if he is hungry, he says, I don't want to take his help because I want to fix my, but I will say, no, no, you have to take help. <laughs> and so this is how Islamic society works. Build the society on basis of brotherhood. Now, is there scarcity? I've already argued that there's no scarcity. It's a fraud. Today, the money being spent on cosmetics is enough to feed 
all the hungry people in the planet. The money being spent on problems caused by overweight is, uh, yani people are eating too much because they're maximizing their consumption. So today, if we look at how much money is being spent on diseases caused by obesity, on health clinics and diets and fads, this is enough to feed the entire planet. So what are we talking about scarcity? Uh, if you look at unused consumer goods, there was a survey in Australia about $100 million of worth of, because uh, the consumer society is based on excess production. You produce and produce and produce and you, then you advertise and you convince people to buy things that they don't need. So people buy these things and they stay in their package and they get thrown in the garage. They're never uh, used. A hundred million dollars. So if you just uh, any stop all this excess production, excess consumption, we can all live easily in simple lifestyle, which is what is recommended by Islam. If you look at the wasted food, people throw away food. Today we are seeing all over that you should eat. At least if you buy something, you should eat it. You shouldn't throw it away. Uh, wasted crops, yani people harvest in ways which are, uh, so, so a lot of food is just not harvested. So all of this is enough to feed the plant. So what are we talking about scarcity? There is more than uh, 3000 calories available today in the world in terms of food per capita. And this amount, the amount of food per capita has been increasing over the past century. So contrary to Malthus, which is the scarcity idea that there is not enough food, population grows fast and food grows slowly. It's just not true. Food has been growing faster. So the burning question is, how can we redistribute wealth in order to feed the poor? This is the question. How can we make sure today in Pakistan, we don't need foreign assistance to feed our hungry people. We have enough food in Pakistan, but the food is not getting there. Why? Because of wrong economic theories, wrong economic systems, wrong ways of organizing the society. <clears throat> in the uh, past, we used to do this much more successfully and there were mechanisms. So there is a um, author um, article written, Julie Nelson, called Poisoning the Well, How Economic Theory Damages Our Morals. So basically the finding is that people are naturally generous. The child is born with a generous nature. This is Dinul Fitra. But then they are trained to be selfish. And economic theory trains people to be selfish. I have been teaching uh, in Pied, microeconomics and Islamic approach. And I am teaching about how economic theory makes absolutely the wrong predictions. So there's a, and this is something which has become well known by now. There is a game which is called the ultimatum game in which um, we put a pile of money <coughs> on the table. And I have done this experiment many times. I put 100 rupees. And I say, okay, uh, you uh, share this money with the other, but you, you are free. You can choose your choice. You can take all of it if you like, or you can share 50-50. So now it turns out, uh, and you can easily imagine that uh, people normally share 50-50 or sometimes 60-40 or 70-30, but economic theory predicts that they will take all 100. But nobody does that, except a few students who are trained in economics. <laughs> when you do it, <laughs> Yes, yes, we can do it. I have... <laughs> oh, that's too much. <laughs> yes, I, I had, actually I did this yesterday with, the, I had made, uh, converted into lots of 10 rupees notes <laughs> and then I did it many. So anyway, the theory teaches you the wrong thing and uh, economic students get impressed by this theory and then they uh, follow this theory and they suppress their we are told that selfishness is good and selfishness creates welfare for the society. Actually, Mankiw has a statement that market societies work efficiently and do they work efficiently due to love, love and kindness? No, they work because everybody is selfish. That's a ridiculous statement. It is not true. Actually, we can prove that it is false. But this is what economic theory teaches. So according to economic theory, everybody gets what they deserve. 
So if somebody is poor, it's because he is uh, he is uh, lazy. He is not working. He is not ma- contributing his marginal product to society. And uh, actually, this is there is a yani. Uh, There is a reason why this theory is like that. Um, very deep studies have been made. I don't have time to go into that. But basically, the capitalists do not want the poor people to be fed because it uh, causes them to have difficulty in hiring the labor force and it reduces their profits. So, uh, in the West, they are always fighting against labor unions. What labor unions want is higher wages for the laborers and bet- benefits and the economic theory says that if we have labor units this will cause unemployment this is completely false and it has been proven by empirical data in econometrics very serious studies that if you increase the minimum wage it increases employment contrary to the supply and demand theory but so why does economic theory teach us a true a false theory well because uh it is to the benefit of the wealthy capitalists to keep the wages low so that their profits are higher so if we want to think in islamic terms then we have to rethink the nature of the labor market according to the economic theory labor is a disutility if i work then uh, i should be compensated for it people want to minimize their labor maximize their earning <clears throat> this is actually due to a way of thinking about the labor market which is a, a, a capitalist way that i am going to hire you i am actually going to purchase your time and now your time belongs to me and i can make you do whatever you want islamic uh, theory of the firm is very different from this so obviously if i am going to purchase his time and i am going to make him do whatever uh, i want to do and the result is going to be wealth for me profits so then this is not a very meaningful job and in fact it has been described that labor creates uh, alienation people are just yani just as any if somebody is a slave so he is he is not uh, getting his own uh, his life becomes meaningless to some extent boring meaningless and this is what happens in a capitalist society this is the problem of a market society where all things are for purchase and sale sale islam does not create a market society <laughs> labor gives meaning to life the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kissed the hands of somebody who was callous in labor so labor is not a useless thing in islam now <clears throat> islam teaches us that every human being is infinitely precious if you take one life it is as if you have killed the whole planet and if you save one life so one human being is worth billions of lives so then <clears throat> there is a very puzzling question how can we organize a labor market when you cannot buy and sell human beings as you can in human uh, capitalist society so it is done on different principles not on the princi- on capitalist principles so then labor is a form of worship allah taala has created us all for ibadat only so all the actions of a muslims are worship so now the question is how can we organize labor so that it becomes worship so there are many different principles which are used for this purpose one of them is that if um, yani it is farz kifaya on me to feed my family feed myself also if i am not feeding myself then i will be a burden to society somebody else will have to do it so that i don't want to be a burden in society so i have to feed myself except for some special classes like the scholars uh, islam says that you feed them and let them worry about the uh so as a collective responsibility we are supposed to and that's how islam created the first universities and the goal was explicit that these scholars they will work on knowledge which is a very sacred uh, and uh, the rest of us we will make sure that they are fed and housed and clothed so that they don't have to worry about these things <clears throat> but more than that 
if we are engaged in a firm, <clears throat> the um, uh, goal of the firm is to serve. If I'm producing bread, the MBA program says that I'm producing bread in order to make profits. But the Islamic firm says that I'm producing bread so that I can feed the people who need to eat. So we have to reconceptualize the firm. Islamic businessmen, according to the Hadith and the Quran, they will be with the Shohada and the Siddiqeen and the Salihin. So how can it be that if they are just seeking money, then they cannot? It, it requires a different way of thinking. So there is a Hadith that the one who gives is blessed and the one who withholds is cursed. This is interpreted to say that <clears throat> if the society is facing a scarcity of some good, like wheat and the businessman imports and provides it to them, he's not doing it to make a profit. He's doing it because there is a need. Uh, then um, uh, the... Um, and he with those, there is the other opposite that he takes advantages of the people's hunger to, uh, to maximize his profits. He is accursed. So according to economic theory, the one who anticipates that people are going to be hungry and he hoards the bread in order to maximize profits, he is providing a service to society. This is what Adam Smith says. And this is what modern economic theory says. But this is actually... According to Islam, it is completely wrong, not permissible. So, so in an Islamic firm, <clears throat> we have a reversal of the goals and the ends. In the MBA in Harvard teaches that you provide service in order to make profits. In the Islamic firm, we do the reverse. We earn profits in order to <clears throat> provide service. Because if I started producing bread and feeding to everyone hungry without taking any money, then I will not be able to run this business for very long. So I take Jai's profits as was done, that in enough to enable me to live and to feed my workers and to have a, a comfortable life so that I can provide this service with shukr of Allah. <clears throat> now, once you make the service the bottom line, then the whole picture changes. Now... If I am producing, a, I have a tannery, I am producing leather, I am saying, okay, this is a service I am doing. But I am also polluting the river, this is a disservice. So I have to count this in my bottom line. That uh, So now all of these so-called externalities which occur when you are only looking at profits as money making and that's the goal of the firm, they become internalities. Now I have to see how much service am I providing. If I am doing some harm to the public and I am doing some good, then I have to balance these and make sure that I am providing net service because tomorrow I will be facing Allah Ta'ala on the day of judgment and he will tell me. <clears throat> so, uh, an Islamic firm will automatically take these into account. But, Islam is a very pragmatic and practical religion. It knows that not everybody will be following the ideals and some people might do harm. So, there is a mechanism which is called hisbah, which has started from the days of the Prophet. And hisbah is called market regulation. If somebody is doing harm to the public, then um, the hisbah takes care of this. Uh, they, there is lots of you know, uh, laws and regulations and methods to deal with. So in Islam, we had, uh, in Islamic civilization, we had something which is called guilds. Uh, these are associations of skilled traders. And these were in the Ottoman Empire, in Islamic Spain. And uh, they take care of their own profession, like uh, we could have an association of doctors. So they, are, they arrange for the training, licensing, and providing for needs. So now, when you have a service orientation, and, and, and these organizations made just profits, they did not maximize profits. You can read the accounts. They said, okay, on uh, this is uh, how much it costs, and about it was on the order of 10% is jais, and this is what we should take. We should not overcharge the public because that would not be fair. Now today, according to the economic theory, there is no concept of fair. You can charge however much uh, the, you, you will uh, need to to make, maximize profits. So we find uh, every day in the USA, they are selling drugs which are life-saving 
at thousand dollars more than what it costs. There is a famous drug, uh, and there are many such cases which they were selling for uh, seven hundred dollars uh, last year, and now they are selling for three thousand dollars, and. <clears throat> because that's what max profit maximizes. According to economic theory, the firm is supposed to maximize profits and they have no social responsibilities. It is not that, you know, this drug is very important and it will save lives, so let me charge a low price for it so as to serve society, because that's not their goal. So there was a great transformation which took place in Europe where they had a traditional society like ours in the sense that service was a goal, making profits was not approved. It is in mentioned in the uh, in the Bible that the rich man cannot uh, the, uh, cannot go to heaven is more difficult for him than uh, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle, and many other things against wealth and in favor of poverty. <clears throat> but uh, because of the industrial revolution, the whole society changed. There was massive production, overproduction, and uh, uh, basically then uh, many, many changes in society took place. Religion lost a battle to science. And so ultimately, the idea of making money and making profits became acceptable, socially acceptable. So once you, are, uh, you have a corporation which makes profits, then guilds become bad. So if you have doctor's guilds and they, can, they have life-saving equipment, they can say, okay, give me all your money and I will save your life. So then they started uh, this anti-monopoly and breaking up the guilds. But in Islam, if, you are, if your goal is service and you have a guild of doctors, and we can say that, look, we want to make sure we ha you have a guild and your responsibility is to make sure that every person in Pakistan receives medical treatment. And you can charge them money, but uh, uh, ensure that they, they can pay that money. And definitely somebody who doesn't have money should not be denied service. This is impossible. So <clears throat> you can charge money as long as the person has money, if this is the way to organize the system. But one thing that we want, the, the, your goal is to make sure that everybody gets served. Now, how you do it, that's your business. So as long as the monopoly, the guild has <clears throat> understands that my job is to make provide medical service, they will say, okay, people go and, go and complain that you are uh, all your doctors are in the cities and there's nobody serving the rural areas. So then they have to get together and say, okay, we are failing in our duty and nobody wants to go to rural areas so let's arrange for shifts we will send one person for one month and second person so you see as long as their goal is to provide service a guild is very useful because they can collectively provide good service but if their goal is to make profits then a guild is very bad so what about finance the central the central institution of um, a capitalist society's bank because the central goal of a capitalist society is to accumulate wealth. So the bank is the institution which allows you to hoard wealth, to accumulate it, to grow wealth. Now in Islam, if somebody has uh, one crore rupee excess of his needs, what should he do with it? Well, if you take it to uh, the capitalist, he will say, okay, you can take this one crore and you make it into two crores and I'll show you how. But the people who had excess money uh, at the, and took it to Prophet wasalam, he said, what you do with it? You make waqf so that you can serve others and you can, this will last until um, Qiyamah. So you will earn benefit, charity until Qiyamah. So what you do with excess in capitalist society is different from what you do with excess. The Quran says that they ask how much you should spend, say whatever is in excess of your needs. So in a, in a capitalist society, the, what you do with your excess is you put it in a bank and you get uh, earn interest on it and you earn more. And this is ridiculous. Yani if you have enough for your needs, then why do you want more? Islam says that if you have more than you need, there are other people who have needs. Spend it on them. So this creates brotherhood because now you see, I don't need in a society like this, I don't need to. People say, but what happens if you are needy? Well. I have a thousand brothers and they are going to spend on me and so I don't need to worry. So a cooperative society can be happy with much less. In an in a individualist society, I have to take care of all my needs. 
So I cannot count on anybody for help. So when I'm, suppose I'm sick, then uh, I have to make sure that if I get cancer, I have to have 5 lakhs rupees or 10 lakhs rupees in my bank account so that I can treat. But only, uh, and everybody has to think like that. But in a cooperative society, only very few people get cancer. So I say, well, I don't need to worry because there are 100,000 people and if they all just give one rupee, it will be enough for me. And they will all give rupee because they are my brothers. So, basically, we uh, in the capitalist society, they're going crazy pursuit of money, their excess production, excess consumption. Does it bring happiness? No, not even from the point of view. I said, you specify your goal of life. Suppose that you say that, okay, after death, uh, we will be turn into dust. So, okay, you want to maximize your lifetime happiness. Will it happen if you maximize your consumption? This is false. This is an illusion. Even if you are... Um, if you are concerned only with maximizing happiness in this life, it does not come by consumption. You know, you have these ads for Coca-Cola, so if you drink Coca-Cola, it makes you happy. And it is true, if you are hot and hungry and thirsty, and you drink Coca-Cola, it will make you momentarily happy. But is this the formula for happiness? <laughs> you, you take tons of Coca-Cola and you keep drinking Coca-Cola all the time? Useless. Short-term happiness is different from long-term happiness. And Long-term happiness depends on your character. And this is something which has been proven by psychologists who know nothing about Islam. And you know what is the most important thing to make you happy? It is called gratitude. This is secular. Any those people who feel sh shukr uh, to Allah for all the blessings, Allah Ta'ala will increase their blessings. And that is the for secret to happiness. And there are many others. All of them have to do with character, with being content, for what you have. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said, that uh, true richness is contentment of the heart. So, basically, uh, Mahbub al-Haq and Amartya Sen pioneered this human development paradigm. See, the modern economic theory says that wealth will bring happiness, but uh, the human development paradigm says that it is uh, what is internal. The Prophet ﷺ developed human beings. He did not make them rich. And this is the same formula uh, valid today for our success. This is the meaning of development. Development in Islam means human development. How can I... Every human being has infinite potential. He can become rise higher than the angels or he can be worse than the beast. So how we can develop the potential, how we can teach human beings to be human. This is what the Prophet ﷺ did. These people who were fighting each other and burying their, killing their own daughters, they became so much uh, virtuous that the Quran says that they feed each other when even they are hungry. And they, they have love in their hearts and they take care of each other. They have many, many uh, characteristics which are very ideal characteristics. So this is the meaning of development. Um, in the West, knowledge is about human capital and valuable knowledge is that which will uh, lead you to earn money. Students come and ask me, what should I study so as to make the maximum amount of money? Now, the question is, what should I study so that I can become the person, you see, the, the seed, you plant it and it develops into a tree. So every human being is just a seed. Can, if he develops his spiritual potential, then he can become, and Allah Ta'ala describes the tree of Iman, its branches are in the skies and its roots are very firm and deep. So if you develop your spirituality, then you can become a real human being. And that is what uh, created a revolution in the world. So, modern economics is the religion of wealth and capitalism. And it is opposed to Islam, which is the religion of... Okay, so, basically, um, what I want to say is that economic theory is a fraud. Believing it, I mean, even if we restrict our attention to worldly goals, how we can become rich. Alright, let's forget about 
spirituality and, uh, and spiritual development, how we can eat and drink and be comfortable in this life. The East Asian economies performed a miracle for, um, they, they were the only economies to industrialize after uh, Russia, late industrializing. Uh, they achieved it by following many policies which are actually exactly opposite of what economic theory teaches. And this was, there is a book by World Bank called East Asian Miracle. It starts out by saying that they did everything against the book. So it analyzes, this is what they did, X, Y, Z, V, W. And then they created the World Trade Organization and they banned all of these things that you cannot do industrial policy, you cannot do government intervention, you cannot provide support, you cannot intervene in the capital and exchange market. All of these things were done by uh, the East Asian countries. So basically they want to prevent us from developing using the same strategies. Uh, they have given Nobel laureates to Pharma who was responsible for the global financial crisis because his theory of rational expectations is exactly that the mar stock market cannot get a bubble in it which is what was the cause of the crisis and when bubbles came up they said no our theory says this cannot happen and people kept saying that something is going to happen and people kept saying our theory says it cannot. So he, he got a Nobel Prize. But the economists in East Asia who engineered this miracle, they have never gotten any recognition. Why? Because we don't want to be shown the path to development. So, the problem today, the biggest change which are keeping us poor are not the physical power of the uh, rich countries. It is actually our own enslavement to false ideas. It's our own, we have made sajda at the Buddha of Western knowledge. And whatever they say, even though it's so flatly opposed to Islamic teaching, we say, yes, that must be right. If Quran is saying something different, then probably it means something else. I haven't understood it properly. So, for example, there was a battle uh, about scarcity. The early mu uh, Muslim economists, they said, no, scarcity is nonsense. Allah Ta'ala says, Fadlullah, har jaga. That there is Allah Ta'ala's bounty is vast. So how can there be scarcity? But the later generation, they went and studied in Western universities and they got impressed and they said, okay, this must be true. So then they said that Islam also teaches scarcity. Uh, they are saying Islam also teaches utility maximization. Even though Allah Ta'ala says, Lan tanalul birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibboon. Allah Ta'ala says, you take your best most favorite thing and give it away. This is utility minimization, not maximization. But they say, no, Islam teaches utility maximization. So, the economists are actually the priests of this religion of capitalism. And they get paid for this. There is a, yani paid in the sense that um, you, you can get contracts with World Bank and IMF and you can make policy, you can get prestigious position. If you teach radical ideas like mine, your articles are not published and your projects are not um, accepted because... So, there is a class of people, you see that you have heard, all heard about the top 1% and the bottom 90%. There is the middle class of 9%. These are the people who collaborate with the top 1% in return for the benefits. And this is always necessary. When the British came, uh, there were very few white people. And there was a huge awam. So they had to create this class of people who uh, were on their side. As Macaulay said, that these people will have brown faces, but their hearts will be Muslim. They will admire us and they will exploit their own people on our behalf. So these are the coconut class, they are brown on the outside and white on the inside. And they collaborate with the rulers in order to... So exactly like this, the economists are part of the power structure and they, by their theories, they help keep, sustain the system. So, the way to change this 
how can we change? There is a, a system of chains in place and this system works by giving us temptation of this worldly outcome that you, if you do this, you will get jobs, you will get benefits, you will get perks and if you don't, then you will suffer. So the Islam teaches us to uh, say this world is for struggle and outcome will be on the in the Jannah. So in this world we are not looking for maximum utility or maximum consumption. In this world we are content with whatever we give. This world was given to us to struggle. So those who struggle, Allah Ta'ala will give them the knowledge. So if we struggle against the system and try to create a system which will provide food to the hungry, health for to the those who need it, and take care of the needs of the poor, then Allah Ta'ala will guide us, will provide us with the knowledge that we need and will create the knowledge which, which, which will not be modern economics, it will be a genuine Islamic economics. By the way, Islamic economics has become distorted because exactly of this reason. They, they say that, okay, let's take capitalist economics and let's add uh, Islamic teachings into it. So this is impossible. You are taking something which is the opposite of Islam and you want to add Islamic teachings into it. And this is why people have failed to create an Islamic economics. So we will struggle and in this earth we are not guaranteed success. The, uh, only the struggle is itself a success. If we, success. if we fight on the side of the haq, that is success. Whether we are shaheed or whether we are outcome, it is not promised to us that we will succeed in creating a just system. Only thing that's promised is that in Akhirah we will have the right outcome. So that is uh, the end of this talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.